in my view, in terms of what capacity gaps we could address in our centres of excellence, I think there are a number of key issues that we need to address, both as an industry and on a regional basis. First, I think we need to help people understand mining's role in society. It is connected to sustainability. There is not one use on the planet that probably doesn't have minerals at the heart of their use or the materials that we use to help create a whole range of products, services um, and constructions. So understanding that role is absolutely key. And the second part of that is in particular understanding, for example, how mining minerals, uh, fertilisers, support the agricultural industry. We bring <coughs> energy infrastructure, water, roads, communications, education, health services, water again. And so there are so many things that we can add to a community that changes their future, including providing them with the infrastructure that helps them develop new commercial activities. And so understanding how we play our role at a local level is absolutely critical. And if I take it one step back, at a regional level, and I use South Africa as a good example, where we consulted as a company, and this is in my time at Anglo-American, when we consulted with other mining companies, other businesses in the province of Limpopo, and we worked with the government, we were able to agree on where we should put water infrastructure, roads and other infrastructure, schools and other support functions, so that the community got a much broader benefit from our activities. And it also worked for the mining companies as well. And it, uh, it also helped local businesses of all other shapes and sizes be more effective in their operations. So again, understanding and how we can do our work better is really important. The third point is the capacity to improve what we actually do. So how might we reduce our physical footprints by using less water to mine the minerals we mine, using less energy, using less physical ground, so being more precise in the way we mine, uh, not produce waste, or if we produce waste, leave it in a way that's both safe and reusable by the community. So understanding the earth forms, nature, uh, mountains, sea, where products are, absolutely key in the first instance. Secondly, understanding the nature of the geology, and in both cases, artificial intelligence, the ability to, if you like, find data, sort the data and understand what it means to give us a better idea of where ore bodies may be, where minerals may be, how they may occur, and how we best extract them is the starting point for getting the answers right in, a broader, in the broader mining sense. And again, uh, the artificial intelligence story is a great story and it's about data and understanding how to use data. And that can also impact the way we think about mining, conceiving new mining methods and modelling them through the data we have to understand how we can be more efficient, more productive. Instead of mining companies, what do we think about becoming material solutions companies? And we become part of the supply of all the materials we need and we can reuse many of the products we produce primarily from mining from other sources. And I think that's a vision of the future for our industry being a material solutions provider that I think needs a lot more thought and I think can play a much bigger role in the way we think about shaping our industry for, for the future. I think the industry has to think very carefully about how it responds to addressing the skill shortage that is impacting the super region and all regions in terms of the minerals industry. The first point, um, I think we have to tell our story a lot better. Young people of today are interested in the future of the planet and with that in mind, they like to understand how things work 
and in particular the role we play as a minerals industry in the future of the planet. And I think we've got a great story to tell, whether it's reducing agricultural footprints, whether it's reducing other human footprints, we have a massive net positive impact on the world and helping people understand how the world works and how we play our role in the world, literally touching every industry in every possible way. The second point is to help kids understand the scope of professions that are involved in our industry. We touch every profession on the face of the planet. Generally, the mining industry pays well, so it's a place that you can be rewarded well for doing the work you do. It provides you an opportunity to travel, to see the world, to go to places you might not normally see, but more importantly than any of those pieces, it's an industry that makes a difference and you can make a positive difference. Finally, I think the ability to craft our professional training and development to suit the nature of the work we do. So, for example, at universities I've been involved in, we've been looking at both on-site training and in classroom training and trying to marry the two so that over five or six years they get an integrated exposure to what's happening out in the field and on the theory and then ultimately they have choices to make. Do they want to go down a technical path? Do they want it to be about people and, and, and being involved in all sorts of the industry elements that involve people, social development, promotion, right the way through to environmental solutions and helping us create a better world in that more general sense. Educating kids at school, educating teachers and educating parents is the starting point for me in changing the world's perception around mining or maybe not even changing the world's perception, helping people understand how the world works and how we play our role in the mineral sector, supporting how the world works and shrinking negative environmental footprints. When one thinks about other industries and how we can learn lessons from those industries, I quite often look at an industry that is connected to the mining industry which is the material sciences industry and its use of artificial intelligence to work out what materials can be used in what applications to improve performance. So if you look at battery life, used to be a day, then it's 10 days, now it's a year, 10 years. So the science that goes into that research to understand what materials can play a more important role or a more effective role in improving efficiency is something that I think we can learn in the mining industry. So the application of artificial intelligence in fundamental research, I think, can play a big part in improving how we think about or, if you like, develop the science of mining to reduce our footprint in terms of negative footprints, consumption of water, consumption of energy, physical footprints, use of tailings, elimination of waste, how we can use that approach to improve how we contribute to society and at the same time increase our positive footprints like how we connect uh, with local communities, how we can make a difference to those communities by making them a partner in the development of the mine and how we can help them develop new commercial opportunities. So there are so many different things we can learn from different industries. I use material sciences as a way of thinking about researching how we can do our job better, but we can also learn a lot from social scientists and environmentalists in terms of how we improve our industry again to make the world a better place. And for me, that's an endless pursuit of doing a better job and again, it goes back to that conversation around reimagining mining. I've quite often been asked in the last two or three years about my conversation on how the world works. And I relay an experience when someone was telling me in one of our countries that we were operating in as Anglo-American that uh, as a consequence of COVID, 
um, all mining activities, all businesses were being shut down and people were being relocated across the country back to the townships um, to be safe. And as I pointed out at the time, I thought that moving 500,000 people across the country to the townships, if they didn't have COVID before they started to travel, they probably would by the time they got home and they'd be in locations that probably didn't have the best medical facilities available. And in unpacking the conversation that I was in with a few people um, in that country, I talked about the mining company's involvement in the local communities. And so I asked the question, well, if we're gonna shut everything down, does that mean we shut the water? The water doesn't jump from the river or the stream to the house, it has to be pumped. They said, oh, well, of course we have to keep the water running. The second question I ask is, well, what about keeping the lights on? Do you want me to continue to run the power station to keep the lights on and allow people um, electricity? I said, of course, we've got to keep the lights on. So what should we do about food supply to either the local store or the supermarket? And they said, oh, we hadn't thought about that. So we'll have to keep all the transportation links going. We'll have to bring food. We'll have to allow people to go and get food. And, and, uh, yes, 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 we'll have to let all of that continue. And they said, OK, it's everything but the water, the power, the food, the fuel. And I said, OK, we're also transporting fertilisers and other materials to farms so that next year we've got... And they said, stop. We understand the point. We hadn't thought about how things work. And I take that on a micro scale and say, when you look at how the world works, you might be able to shut things down for a day or two, but you can't stop. So how we as business, industry, government, communities work together to try and keep people safe while keeping everything going is the type of issue that we had to solve with COVID. And it took us quite a while to get there. Now, I take that to a macro level and say, on a global basis, my experience is most people don't know how the world works. So I think, in terms of social studies at schools, we need to rethink what we're doing at schools right from day one and help people understand how the world works. And in that context, I think mining is well served because we can then explain how minerals are used for literally everything we do and what our contribution to society is. And for me, there's no better way to bring kids or attract people to our industry than to help them understand how important we are, how important we are to preserving and improving the environment and making the world a better place. One of the things that have interested me, and I've been in the mining industry for 47 years, is to think about how we reimagine mining in that global context. The exciting thing, I think, about the forum and the region and its potential role in society and mining is that not only is the region rethinking its role in society and reimagining its role, you're also providing the mining and minerals industry with an opportunity to reimagine its role, both to tell our story better in terms of how important we are to what happens and, and how we impact life on Earth and make life better for everyone on Earth. It also helps us reimagine the role we play and how we can tell our story better, do a better job, and really make a difference. And I think it's a great opportunity for us to talk about and understand how we can play a better part in the making of a better society. And I think it's great that a new country, a new region is looking to play a bigger role and is part of the reimagining the world as we go forward. It's a great place to be, excited to be here and thrilled to be in these conversations.